Hey guys, so today we are going to talk about a subscriber question that I got this morning. And the question in question is, Frederick, when should I use serverless? So let's get into it. Now, this is a pretty good question because I can imagine that there's quite a few people who have, let's say, concerns about picking the right like making the right choices for their applications and you know what should i p bet on i mean this question can kind of flow over to anything like should, which framework should i use which database should i use like these sorts of questions are very very common and picking serverless over something else that's also a very it's a pretty big topic but i'm gonna see if we can walk it through what i can walk you through it and i'll share some thoughts on from my perspective i mean there's no universal truth to this i can only share with with you guys my own journey like i've used ser serverless for quite a while and i also know when i would like to say that i have a pretty good feel for when it's a good idea and when you should use something else and i'll, I'll even go one further for you and i will talk about the what I call the life state, like li the life cycle of an application. So first and foremost, the fundamental thing that we need to ask about serverless is, okay, what are the limitations? Oh, and like the benefits we, I think we can cover, but what are the limitations? Well, when you start working on a project, the first question you need to ask is, okay, what do I need? And how do I get it as quickly as possible? Because you won't, you don't want, this is one of the most common mistakes, guys. People have this idea where they, they hear what the bloggers and the YouTubers and the TikTokers are saying about something like, say, microservices. And they completely get sold on this concept because these people are promoting like the like the benefits of this, but they're not talking about the limitations and they are absolutely not mentioning very clearly to some people, it seems, when it is a good case to use this sort of technology. And the same thing goes for serverless. Now, serverless has a few limitations. Number one is that you will not be able to customize your entire stack. You will not always be able to pick whichever database you want or whichever authentication methods you want. You will not be able to use all of the fun fancy frameworks and all the, the different middlewares that you can imagine. There's tons of these subtle little limit limitations because serverless power comes from that it is very simple for you to get started with it. It abstracts away the need for you to set up all your own infrastructure. It abstracts away the need to up set up buckets and like static storage for files and stuff of this nature and databases and all that stuff. It's kind of just provided to you as a part of an environment. Very similar to actually, if you think about it, to how the browser works or how mobile devices work, where you have this box that you are given and within that box, you can do certain things. And that's the power of serverless. So if you really think about that, when would something like that be really useful? When would all those limitations, but the convenience of having all that kind of abstracted away from you be the best possible fit for your project? Well, I will argue when you're just starting out, because when you are in the prototyping stage of your company or your ID, you don't really need like advanced logging systems or you don't, and you don't need load balance, like have, you know, real control over your load balances. You don't have a hundred services that need to talk to each other. So you don't need orchestration and service discovery and validation strategies or authentication, secret management, all these different things that come to play when you're at larger scale. What you really want is a way to store some data usually to validate a user some way and maybe store some files and handle some network requests. That's a very basic server. And serverless does that very, very well. So that's the way that I've used it. And that's the way I know other people use it, where if you have a mobile app or a new web project or something like that, and you just want something going quickly and you don't know if it's gonna be something that's going to grow all that much you start out with something like service you don't have to but it's a very good fit for that now what then happens and this is the thing that i think we need to talk about more because some people as i said they don't really get this that you need to pick the solution that is right for the given situation so if serverless is a good idea in the very start of your project what will be the next thing and now everybody's going to yell to me and say oh it's going to be microservices no it's not going to be microservices. 
The next natural stop for you is going to have needs for customization because you're going to hit a point where serverless becomes very hard for you to maintain and you're going to need certain customization you're going to meet certain customization needs that you will most likely not be able to just to fill with serverless in and of itself. Then you have, of course, there's many strategies to how to solve this problem. I mean, you can run partly serverless and then have different services which are running more traditional application, web applications in the cloud or whatever solution you use. But I will argue that the next natural step is, and that depends on whether or not you want to skip serverless as well, but it's going to be the monolith. Now, the monolithic application is just the traditional way that people used uh, have been. I mean, we're still doing it, right? That's how we write web applications. It's just a big server with a bunch of endpoints and logic. And that's a dirty word for some people because everybody's sold on microservices for. I'll touch on that as well for the various reasons. Because, but that becomes the next natural stopping point for you because then you have more control over the entire stack. That's like the f f with a monolithic application, you have benefits such as very. It's very easy to deploy. It's very easy to m maintain a monolithic application when it as it is at a medium scale size. It's not really really big just yet. It's not a monster application, but it's slightly larger, a slightly more sophisticated application than what serverless is or what you're running when you're just doing the prototype right. However, that also has a few drawbacks. And these drawbacks, the main drawbacks of having a monolithic application is when they get r too big. It's a growth issue. And that's the red thread I hope you're following along here. The problem and like the, dis the thing that should dictate when you go with serverless or a monolith or microservices and so forth is the size of the project and how many people are working on the project. Unless, of course, you have an architecture, like a spe very specific application that very well fits into a certain category of application. It's very rare that you have that sort of requirement, but there are absolutely situations with that when that happens. So for a monolithic application, it makes a lot of sense to think in terms of how many people are working on that project. If you have one or two t software teams, maybe eight people working on a monolith, that's not that many people it's going to work just fine for you because you're not going to get in each other's way when you're working, which is the biggest drawback with the monolithic application. Because if there are too many people on the same code base, it becomes very hard to, well, basically to not create merge conflicts and di these different issues, which comes when several people are modifying the same code at the same time. When you get to that problem, when you have your company has grown to a size where you don't know like or rather where people are simply just getting each other in each other's way. Then you go over to, it's still not microservices, it's service-oriented architecture. So what is that? Well, service-oriented architecture is basically what a lot of you will think is microservices, but instead of having the microservices uh, mindset, which is the extreme of this, you should split your application up in natural chunks, natural pieces. There's no reason for you to go all the way to make like these tiny, super small services once again unless you have so many people working on that code base that these small chunks are actually needed. Think about it. If you have a monolith and that is an effective one of, if not the most simple and effective ways of doing application development, and you can support up to say, let's just call it eight people, maybe more. Effectively can, these people can effectively work on that system at the same time, and you can max out the productivity on that application with the, this amount of people. If you then split that into, say, the monolith becomes three different services that talk to each other, well, then you increased, uh, again, logically, you would increase the amount of people who can effectively work on the total project together by that much, by three times. If, if you think about it as a like just as in terms of adding people to the project. The same thing goes for microservices. And microservices is the final stage in my world when we talk about project, like project maintenance and like project structure. You will never get to have microservice be like a, a super effective system un, uh, unless you have the sort of size that you would require in order for that to make sense. You would have to in order for it to be really justified, you would have to have a lot of people getting in each other's way when they're working on your project. 
in order for microservices to be just this really perfect fit for your project. So what I want you to take away from this is that when you ask the question, should I use serverless, the thing, or should I use a monolith or microservices and so forth, you have to think about the project life cycle. Where in your, where in your company or your project like development stage, where, where are you in, the, in all these stages? If you're in the, just in the beginning and you just want to go for iteration speed, and maybe you're one or two people, serverless is a really good fit. And if you have a massive super company like Google, then microservices is probably the way to go. If you're in between, it's probably going to be either a monolith or a service-oriented architecture. Have a great day.